Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is game four for Calamari and Eureka. This is the Payne Street Nation StarCraft II tournament, and this is the finals. Uh, Calamari is, what, uh, two games now to one. Uh, am I correct there? You are correct. It is Matt Point. Yeah. And Calamari just needs one more win to become the first ever champion in uh, StarCraft II for Payne Street Nation. And uh, I think I think both of these players won it, but Calamari, uh, from the way he's been talking, just really lusts for that win, <laughs> if I may say. Uh, <laughs> but Eureka is showing that he is not out of this tournament. He lost two games in a row, but last game he, he had a very convincing win against Calamari with Marine Marauder Medivac and just an excellent push, uh, excellent timing push. The map for game four is Taldarim Altar. Huge map favoring long term uh, macro style gameplay. Cross map positions in the bottom right we have Camillari, and in the top left is Eureka. You know, I'm glad Rather there's at least one of us that respects that his name isn't Calamari. And I, I, <laughs> I apologize that I keep calling you that, but it's stuck now. That's the way it's going to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't change my ways. I'm disappointed to see neither player walling off at the sort of fat choke between the, uh, or just outside the natural expansion to make it a quick, uh, fast expand type of game. Uh, both Terran and Protoss are able to do that. Yeah, you know, I, I am surprised about that as well, and I see a lot of players who, who do that, and, you know, it's not so much a big deal for Calamari because he's not going to wall off, I don't think, but, you know, Eureka is already walling off, so you got to think, why not just take that that uh, little bit larger choke and have a very safe natural expand? Camillari, we see opening the same way he has for the past three games. Got his uh, core down now with the gas, and we will look for the fast warp gate chrono boosted out as he has done. Uh, Eureka getting in with an early... This is his earliest scout yet. <laughs> yes, it is. And uh, he's going to be seeing what we've been seeing for the past three games, uh, this early cybernetics core, or not so much early cybernetics core, but straight straight away warp gate. Uh, hopefully that early scout uh, was, I did not see, but was Calamari able to get into Eureka's base? I'm not sure that he was. Uh, nope, he was not. He was stuck outside that wall, saw only the supply depots and the bare axe. Uh, very interesting. Eureka's already going for a factory. Uh, that's a real early factory, uh, I think, especially in a large map like this. But look at this. Uh, Calamari already going for his natural expansion at the four-minute mark, and Eureka knows about it, though. Uh, but it's such a huge map, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything about it really quickly. Looks like he tried to harass with that SCD and block him a little bit, but... Uh Camilleri was able to get that down. Chrono boosting on the warp gate now. Once again, he chose the early stalker, skipping the first zealot. I think that's a good move if you if you want to prevent any kind of uh, annoyance or scouting. The zealot just really can't keep up uh, with that, with, with the scouts. Zealots are very slow. Probably their, their only weakness is how slow they are before they get that leg speed upgrade and we see a hellion coming out from eureka yeah i guess that's what he wanted out of that fast factory <laughs> i did not he actually is getting his starport but i can't imagine he's going that same build with a map this size uh with the with the uh, banshees and tanks but this hellion is going to be able to maybe do a little bit of poking uh try to probably run past the stalker and go straight for the mineral line he does see the three warp gates that are already up, but these four stalkers are going to prevent uh, Eureka from doing any kind of uh, kills on these on these probes. Ill-fated single Hellion harass. Not going so well for Eureka. <laughs> Usually and, it doesn't uh, work against the Protoss <laughs> units, but... So, uh, Camillari has his second up and mining. Uh, we don't see the makings of any expansion from Eureka. Yeah, actually, uh, he does have the tech lab on his starport, and he's producing tanks. If he, if a banshee comes out of that, I'll be very surprised. 
Uh, yep, it is a Banshee, so it looks like he is going to try to do that same push against Calamari that uh, failed in the second game, but was so successful in the last series of games with Calamari. But look at all the stalkers that uh, Kama has right outside of Eureka's base. He's got some zealots. He's got a lot of stalkers, and he's going to want to push in right now. But uh, if uh, Siege Mode is able to finish, which it is very close to finishing at this point, I don't know if he's going to be able to get in. Try to poke in there now. Camillari is going again with the secret pylon reinforcement in uh, what looks like the location of Eureka's third. He's been a big fan of the secret pylon. A little bit of parry, thrust and parry out at the front of Eureka's base there. Between... Very smart for Eureka to just kind of stick and, and move back. That gave him perfect time for the siege tanks to finish. And so I think that may be able to help push off this, uh, this attack. He needs to take out all both of his tanks go down actually, but he has enough marines that I think he's going to be able to clean up these stalkers as well as a banshee that just came out. Four kills on that banshee, really turning the tide in that exchange. Calamari opting for another pylon. Maybe that pylon is just there to uh, trick uh, Eureka into thinking that is actually the forward pylon rather than the one placed in his third. Excellent bit of uh, extra insurance and uh, trickery from. Uh, Camillari there. You always hear about how tricksy the Protoss are. <laughs> uh, a robotics facility going down the, this time, so maybe uh, in this game he intends to get Colossus, but it could also be getting Immortals for the tanks that are coming out for Eureka. Camillari is only now getting up his second gas geyser. Perhaps that was an error, and he uh, thought he had it up earlier, throwing down three more gateways now. And he has blocked in his robot facility with gateways. I don't know if, uh, yeah, I think those <laughs> two that are sort of catty corner will prevent an immortal from sliding through and probably, uh, no, they can escape out the back way there, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think they can, as long as he rallies them that way. It it's all not depends on prevent, the rally point. It's not going to prevent this observer from getting out, though. Uh, look at this big push from Eureka. This is exactly the same kind of build that he was going in the last series of games, sending a lot of his SCVs there to protect the tanks and also to draw fire away from the army, and this is a, a huge push. He's also making his expansion, so this is not an all-in for Eureka, though he is, if this fails, going to lose a lot of those SCVs. Camelgari has seen it as he holds one of the Zelnaga watchtowers. The Banshee's starting to go to work on one of the gases in the natural. He's got that vision with the Banshees, and uh, the tanks are just sieging the assimilator right there. I think all of these Marines are going to go down, though. Uh, no. The tank fire was able to help them survive. Camelgari wisely pulling back out of the range of the tank bringing in his stalkers to attack from range. Uh, needs to be careful stepping. Yeah, he's avoiding the range of those tanks there. Those tanks, such a powerful uh, weapon for Eureka. All the Marines going down, but it's so it's going to be so hard for him to get to these Banshees with uh, the two siege tanks right there. And, and now they're pecking away at the Nexus as a natural shield close to going down. Yeah, the Nexus is dying very slowly, though. Uh, and here he is trying, he's going to try to, he sends in all his SCVs to prevent the, ze the Zealots from getting close to those tanks. But it looks like they may be able to get close, and those tanks are going to go down pretty quickly, as well as those Banshees from, from the Stalkers. Oh no, losing a tank and two more Marines due to uh, a rally point, no doubt. He may have been a bit late on the placement of that bunker. I think that probably would have done him some good. Yeah. Uh, earlier in the exchange. Yeah, definitely. And that gives uh, Calamari. Let's look at the units tab. Uh, a lot more. A lot more units at this point. Uh, let's see if he is going to try to respond with a push of his own. Uh, Calamari getting cloak now for his banshees. Uh, don't know how much that's going to help because. Calamari does have an observer with his army, and presumably with his army at all times. But look at this, I forgot about this pylon there, and he's still just continuing, continually able to warp in units right in front of Eureka's base. Uh, but I don't think, yeah, he steps back because he sees that Eureka is well bunkered in. 
and well turtled in at this point. So he's just probably going to go back and try to work on economy on his own. Let's look at the income tab. Both players pretty even, but Eureka uh, getting a little bit more minerals at this point. Due to that mule advantage, uh, the Terrans get for free. Some of us cry out that it's in balance, but uh, we'll leave that undecided for now. It'll be interesting to see what tech path Camillari decides to go down. Currently, he the only the techiest building he has is a Robo Bay. I don't see a Twilight Council or a Templar Archives. Oh, what's this in the back? Twilight Council. Twilight Forge Council Forge. Going down and two forges and all that's coming out of that robotics uh, bay right now or that robotics facility is uh, observers. And maybe One that's thing I like that uh, Camillari is doing there, he's got a lot of things constructed back behind